What's going on everybody? Welcome back to JDD TV. I'm your host Josh. We are back after a nice little weekend break to talk some transfer news. Hope you guys are excited. I hope you guys are doing well and you had a good long weekend. There's a lot to talk about today. I'm sure from the thumbnail you guys can kind of get on the uh, same wavelength as what we're doing. Chat seems relatively lively as well, but we will be discussing the signing of Daniel Mullen, Nori Maduike, potentially Schultz leaving, and of course, Halstenberg coming in as his replacement. So without further ado, guys, let's just get right into it and see how you guys are doing today. JBBB says, hello, everyone. Hello, Josh. How you doing, my man? Hope you're doing well. How you doing? I guess Sancho needs to pass his medical test before we announce them. That is true. That is very true. Sancho needs to get his medical before the deal is official, but it is as official as it's going to be. But uh, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. What are your thoughts about Toyan being sold? I'm happy with it. I don't know about you guys. The right back position for Dortmund is pretty much figured out. I don't think that Toyan was going to come in here and do anything special. I think the start of next season, we're going to go ahead with Munier being our starting right back with young Paslak as an option. And of course, once Murray comes back, he will probably pick up where he left off and then we even have Emery Chan who can play there as well. The comment section is lit and the chat hasn't even started yet. It's a good day guys. It's a good day to talk some BBB transfer news. Joshua is here. Joshua how you doing my guy? Let's go chat. Let's go good chat today guys. I like it. Jordan Hunt is here says how's you going Josh? I'm going good. I'm going good. Had a nice long weekend. Very hot weather here in Canada. And yeah, seeing a lot of transfer rumors going around, a lot of transfer rumors. The biggest one is that there's reports going around saying that Borussia Dortmund is looking to do the double signing of PSV players Noni Maduike and Daniel Mullen. Now, I have a couple thoughts on that. I've been telling you guys for a long time now that I believe because of the gentleman's agreement that we've obviously known about for a long time that... Mullen is the number one target here for Borussia Dortmund. I think the versatility of Mullen, as well as being able to play as a striker, is really appealing towards Marco Rosa. But I do think with some strategic sales, we can we can potentially do the both. Both double signings. Because right now, on from what I'm reading and from who I'm talking to, it looks like Daniel Mullen is going to be the, where the most of the money is being spent from the Sancho deal. The rest of it is going towards balancing the books. Now, Marcel Helsenberg, obviously a former BBB2 player, wants to come back, 29 years old, not my number one target, as some of you guys probably know, given the fact that he's not overly fast. However, they're looking to bring him in, and to do so, they're going to have to shift out Schultz. So they're going to have to sell Schultz, which is, which is fine. I don't think anyone's going to have any issues with that. Hopefully, we can honestly get more money from Schultz, and we would be replacing him with Halsenberg because Halsenberg's rumored around 8 mil right now, where we could probably get 10 to 15 for Schultz. I know, crazy. And then it leaves in some of the fringe players' sales. So if you're looking at getting rid of Berkey, getting a little money in there. Marius Wolf, we sold Berlardi to, uh, to Marseille. Those kind of monies are going to start to eventually stack up and look to maybe bring in Maduoke. I was thinking to bring in Maduoke, we would have to sell Brandt, for example. Maybe De Thomas Delaney, someone like that. But it does look relatively likely that we will at least have a chance to sign both. Whether PSV plays ball or not, we'll have to wait and see. Member here on the channel, White comes in, says, Hi, Josh, how you doing? I'm doing good, my man. How are you? Hey, Josh, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. You guys seem to be excited to talk some transfers. I'm excited about it as, as well. Hello, my friend. How are you? Carlos here says, I can't see Mall and Maduke coming in. How can we afford both when we have the room with other for forwards like Geo and Hazard? It's an excellent point, man. It's an absolutely excellent point. So a lot of people on, on Twitter are getting very excited about the double swoop. And now, I have... I have concerns. I have concerns about the double soup for a few reasons. As I don't know if, the, if for me, looking in from the outside, taking a look at, at the excitement around Marco Rosa coming there, it seems like Marco Rosa has almost picked up Brandt as his guy. I don't know if any of you guys have any information about, about that or have you noticed it as well, but it seems like Marco Rosa is taking a real shining to Brandt. So that indicates to me that he's looking to keep Brandt and is also looking to play Brandt. And we've had this debate on the channel numerous times. I don't see a way that we can get these players on the pitch. I can't. There's no possible way we can get Royce, Geo, Brant, Hazard, all four of them on the pitch on top of signing Daniel Mullen if we get Maduike. It, it It's very hard to see the way that works. But Carlo makes an excellent point here. Now, the money, I don't know about. My my feeling and what I've read up till now is that Mullen's the guy. But if you can sell some fringe players and find a way to make them, the deal work, it seems like Dortmund are looking into it. 
I think it'll depend. I think it'll depend on a lot of the on a lot of what happens, but even if we do bring in both players, we now have to find a way to get them into the squad. It'll also be very telling on what formation Marco Rosa plays. To get Maduake in, we don't play with wingers right now, and we just lost Jane Sancho. So, excellent point, Carlo. And I don't know. I don't know. I don't have any answers because we we have some good uh, we have some good depth coming in the squad right now. Hi, Josh. Some news about Brandt. The board is considering selling him, but Rosa or personally asked him not to sell him because Brandt is an important part of next season, which is interesting. That is very interesting. I've told you guys on the channel multiple times that I would personally sell Brandt. Doesn't look like that's going to be the case. I mean, again, nothing against Brandt. It's just I don't see a way that we could fit him in. Now, I, I assumed Marco Rosa was going to play a 4-3-3 or a 4-2-3-1 with wingers. With, with the Sancho sale and no other wingers being brought in up to right now, it looks highly unlikely that that's a formation we're going to go with. It looks more likely we're going to go with a 3-4-2-1 or a 4-1-2-1-2 diamond variation if we bring in Daniel Mullen. So it's going to be very interesting to see, see what they do because I don't think we have the personnel right now to play with wingers. I, I, we just we simply don't. Unless you're going to bring in Mullen, going to transfer him over to the left wing and play Hazard on the right wing. But that, that honestly takes out Geo. It takes out Hazard. It's, it's going to be interesting. I'm excited for the uh, couple of preseason games that are going to come up and see how this team originally lines up. Eric says, good. We might be able to afford both of them because we sold Tolian and Blardi. That is true. We can also potentially sell Marius Wolf. We could also potentially sell Roman Berkey, which if you guys didn't know, we just... Another big point for you guys who don't know this, we did give Koble the number one jersey. So that obviously indicates Berkey's on his way out. That's no surprise. But we also gave Kuabali our number four jersey. Now that is interesting. I told you guys I didn't think Kuabali was going to have a ton of minutes. Usually a player who's going to play mostly with the U23s or, or U19s or something like that would have a number like Knauf's, number 36, number 39, whatever it may be. But he got he was given number four. And the last time we gave a youngster a jersey like that was Jaden Sancho, and we gave him number seven. Number four is a very popular defensive number. So that tells me that Koulibaly may have a look in, uh, in the upcoming season. Let me know what you guys think about that, because I thought that was very interesting. Also, drop a like on the chat if you guys are just joining us, and feel free to give us your opinion on these transfers. I only think that one of them will come in, and that is Mullen. I agree, for right now. I agree. I think only one of the two will come in, unless we generate some money. Because uh, I've read so many reports saying that the gentleman's agreement with Mullen, the fact that I think Mullen wants to come here, also the fact that there's um, the money issue, which it seems like Mullen could be bought for about 27 I don't know, it's... It's very interesting to see, but I do uh, totally agree that Mullen's coming in first. But there, there is some money that we can raise to potentially bring in Maduake if we need to. You guys in Leipzig better give Bayern some competition. Well, Leipzig brought in Andre Silva, and if they bring in Lacroix, Leipzig is doing their part. Because before that, I was very unconvinced of where uh, where Leipzig was going this year. Camavinga cost 30 mil. I heard that. It's wild. Hey, Josh, what do you think about another CB in the squad? That's a, and that's a, the Koulibaly is throwing me right off. Um, now, hear me out, guys. So I used to say, I used to say that St. Juice was going to be the one coming in. I was convinced by it. I think we needed speed. I thought he'd be a perfect kind of young budget signing. I don't think St. Juice is coming in anymore. I don't. And, and this is the reason why. Guerrero is going to play 90% of the games if he's fit all season at the left back. If we sell Schultz, which we should, and get a little bit of money, we can then buy Halsenberg, who can come in, he can play as a left back. He's Hell, he's played as a left wing back. He can play as an outside left center back in the back three. He can play as a center back in the back two. Very versatile, very cheap, and wants to come to Dortmund. Decent wages is what I, would, was what I heard. So I, I, if he comes in, he can be the cover for Schultz, but can he be used in different, different options. On top of that, it looks like Kubali is coming up and will get some minutes in the first team, considering we've given him number four. So that screams to me like another center back signing is not going to happen. It's just going to be Halsenberg. We can technically count as left back or center back, but I don't see St. Juice coming in anymore. Very nice background. I'm glad you enjoyed it, my friend. How about a center back, bro? Those are my thoughts. I, I don't see St. Juice or any other center back coming in. I see Kubali getting minutes now, considering, like I said, the, the kit numbers, man, they speak, and he, they, were, they gave him number four, as well as Halsenberg, who is very, very versatile. I was not a big fan of bringing him in because I was looking for speed at the back. I don't think Guerrero is the fastest left back. Hummels definitely isn't the fastest center back. Uh, I, I wanted someone with a little bit more pace, which is why I, I really like the idea of signing St. Juice. However, it doesn't look like that's going to come. We're going to go from 
We're going to sell Schultz, who lost. A, we're going to lose a bit of pace there, but we never use him to begin with. Um, but I, I, I'm growing on Halsenberg given the versatility and uh, the fact that he's itching to come here. Halsenberg is kind of weird because we aren't going for experience instead of youth. Honestly, it ain't bad, but I still prefer St. Juice. Do you guys agree with my point? Because that is that, like a lot of people I, I believe do prefer St. Juice considering he's younger, more of a profile. I love his speed. Uh, but but like I said, it looks like Kubali is going to get those those minutes probably even ahead of Zagadu right now considering Zagadu's injuries. And then Halsenberg's going to come in and can play as an... If we play in a back three, man, he's a perfect outside left back. Hummels through the middle, Akanji on the right. That is that is fantastic. He can play when needed as a left back for Guerrero if he ever decides to go up the pitch or can't make a game. It It's growing on me. It's growing on me. And like I said, he, it sounds like he's going to take a wage cut to come here. And it also sounds like he's desperately excited to come to Dortmund. He also played 68 games for the U23, so it's, it's, it's a little bit romantic. 29, so yeah, it is very interesting, man. Dumfries would be great. He would be, but it looks like he's probably going to be heading to Inter, maybe even Bayern. Unfortunately, we definitely won't be signing a right back. Marco Rosa loves Brandt. That's, that's what I'm, I'm thinking. And I want your guys' opinion on how you see a starting 11 work right now with, with Brandt and also getting other important players on the pitch because I don't see it. Right now, say we sign Mullen and say we sign... Hmm. Like it's hard because even with Mullen, I can't... Like right now without any signings, but I'm going to pretend we signed Halsenberg just because. You could go Koble. Right wing back, Munier, Akanji, Hummels, Halsenberg, Guerrero. Two center mids, take your pick. Witzel, Bellingham, Dehoud, Bellingham, one of the two. Float your cam, or your two floating cams then. Could be could be Brandt and Royce, or Gio and Royce, or whoever you want with Holland up front. But now you don't have Hazard in, you don't have either one of Brandt or Gio in, and you don't have any of the new signings potentially coming in. A little bit of depth, guys. A little bit of depth we have. Delaney to Southampton. I've heard that rumor as well. I can, I can kind of see it. I can kind of see it, especially like I said, we're gonna have to look to to bring in a little bit of money as well. Marco Rosa held a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Schultz. Uh, do you think that Rosa told him to find a new club? I don't know. A lot of people tagged me in that post. I'm assuming not in that specific conversation, but I do think that he's gonna have to look to find another club. If Halsenberg's to replace. Schultz, where will Guerrero play? I don't think Halsenberg is very good and he's very slow and he's 30 years old. So my opinion, the perfect formation to fit him into the squad would be a 4-3-2-1. Like I said, he's an, he's an, in, my, in my personal opinion, he's the best as an outside center, left center back, being left footed. So Guerrero would be as a wing back. Halsenberg would be as a left center back. Then you have Hummels through the middle, which is his best position, as well as Halsenberg's best position, as well as Guerrero's best position. Then you also have a Kanji in there with Munier. Koble and Net, and then I said the, the rest of the formation pretty much picks itself. We loan out Geo if we buy both Makudit um, and Mullen because he won't get playing time. And that's what I'm worried about. That's what a lot of people are worried about. That's why I still don't see Madioke coming in. For right now, I personally only see Mullen coming in. We have so much depth. It's gonna be it's gonna be hard. We saw what it did with Brandt and Geo last year. Both, in my opinion, underwhelming seasons, both struggled to get in. We need a creative midfielder, in my opinion. I disagree, only because uh, I think our midfield's pretty stacked right now. Gio, Brandt, Royce, there's your creative midfields. You also have Dehoud and Bellingham are both fantastic eights. Very creative, in my opinion, as well. Then you have, it's the, it's the defensive midfielders we may need, because we, right now we have Chan, we have Witzel, and we have, and we have um, Delaney. And we may look to flip Delaney. So... I don't know about midfields. I, I think if, if we're lacking anything right now, it's wingers. Halsenberg is a CB for around 10 mil, but we have a lot of decent CBs. If we sell Schultz, he would be okay because he could play left back too. I think that's the biggest idea is you can use him strategically in a back three, and you can also use him as a left back. I don't see Maduke joining us unless it's a good enough offer. We can hope to finalize Maul and ASAP. Jordan, absolutely agree, man. Absolutely agree. I don't, I'm not sold on the, the reasoning of bringing Maduke in. I, I don't see it, especially if we're bringing Mullen in. We have so much depth. I saw Maduke coming if we we're looking to sell Brandt, but right now, if we bring in Maduke, I don't see a way to strategically play everybody <laughs> in the way that they want to be played. It doesn't make any sense to me. Rumors are saying that Ronaldo's asking price is only 25 mil. Could be a pipe dream. <laughs> well, we won't be signing. We won't be signing Ronaldo. That's that's for sure. There's, I don't see him coming to us, unfortunately. But uh, if you guys are just joining us, be sure to drop a like on the stream. Subscribe if you guys are new.
and uh, feel free to join the chat. A lot of comments today. I will try to do my best to get to all of them. Leipzig's strength is their biggest weakness, <laughs> and we lose our biggest strength. Fair, fair. Doku from Belgium was incredible. Unfortunately, he will be more expensive than Mullen. Yeah, if the performance like his was absolutely breathtaking, um, doing it in a major tournament is only going to skyrocket his price. He will probably move on very, very soon. We have to, we have we signed Mullen. I saw tweets about a deal. Um, we have not. I mean, I believe personal terms have been agreed, but um, I have not seen any deal yet. Kobol's number one. Kobol was given number one. Kubali was given number four. That indicates to me that our boy Berkey is right out the door, as well as as Kubali may be looking to have a chance. Is Coach Rosa willing to use the four one two one two formation? My opinion, I still don't see that formation being used throughout the entirety of the season. I see it being used on specific game. Uh, also, getting Mullen is a big indication that that formation may be used a little bit more. But I, I mean, I still think a a 4-3-2-1 right now is the best look, considering we don't have real natural wingers. It'll depend on who comes in, of course. We can expect Kubali to start the first match. Of preseason, maybe. Uh, not Definitely not the regular season. I think Dortmund shouldn't buy a Sancho replacement. We have Brandt, Royce, Geo. The issue with me about not purchasing a replacement, I mean, if, if depending if you're looking at Mullen, because I personally believe Mullen is coming in. Now, he is not our like-for-like like replacement whatsoever, but he is a replacement nonetheless that can come in and offer something different. I I just I find Marco Rosa's favorite formations a 4-2-3-1, 4-3-3. That's my opinion. We don't really have the personnel to, to rock that formation. In my opinion, the three formations right now, I in my personal opinion, with the personnel we have with Mullen coming in, would be a 3-4-2-1, works very nicely. Even a 3-4-1-2 would be fine. A 4-3-2-1, as we know, we played it last year with the inverted center attacking mids, Brandt, Royce, Geo, pick, take your pick, Holland up front, and then the 4-1-2-1-2. Those are the formations I see with our personnel working the best. I don't see the preferred formations. I don't see a 4-3-3 working overly well. Brandt has so much potential. I'd love to see him score under Rosa, but it's early in the month. Many players still be on the road, and it's time to turn off the tournament in Europe. It's true, but I'm still, I mean, I, I'm seeing all these these good things about Brandt, but I don't see a way to fit him in. And feel free, guys, if you want to put in a starting 11 or even the starting half of the of a formation, how do you see Brandt legitimately starting? Because I, I don't I don't see a way, of, of, unless we don't st- sign wingers, he could play, like I said, in a 4-3-2-1 beside Royce. He could play in a 4-1-2-1-2 as maybe an 8 with Royce above him. He could play in a 3-4-2-1, again, the floating cams. But that all every one of those formations leaves Geo out. Have you seen the Pokal schedule? I have. Sounds like we have a game between August 5th and 8th, something along those lines. Unless you're telling me it is confirmed it is on the 8th of August. It's going to be fun, man. We have watch-alongs coming immediately. Our first Dortmund watch-along on the channel will be July 13th. An exhibition match. We've got a bunch of them coming up. It should be a lot of fun. Mullen is better than Maduke by stats, but if Rosa wants to play with wingers, Maduke would be a great fit. It's an excellent point, and I agree. It's going to be very interesting, because right now we don't have wingers. Sell Delaney and Witzel. I can see us potentially selling Delaney. I can't see us selling Witzel. I don't see a reason why PSV would let two of their attackers go on the same team. We're going to bring on a, a PSV YouTuber. Hopefully, we're going to record it today. He's going to give some insight, so it's going to be very cool to talk to him to see what he thinks about potentially both or one of the two moving on. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it depends. If the right if the money comes, the right money comes in, I could see them maybe doing it. But ideally, I mean, Maduoke only started seven games last year. This could be a great season for him to stay at PSV, and, ha- and we we may buy him and then loan him back to PSV. I'm not sure what the the option is there. Give Mounier one more chance. I believe we will. I believe he's going to be our starting right back next season. And Arnand shut down the Halsenberg rumors pretty quickly, so I don't see any truth in those rumors either. I do see some truth in them. I do see some truth. I read a report today that said that uh, Halsenberg, the player, the clubs, they could look to find a deal. The only thing holding it down is that a body needs to go out of Dortmund. So if, if we sell Nico Schultz, then I see the rumors being legitimate. Maduke is younger than Mullen, and Maduke is English, so he would be the next Sancho. 
um, do you really want him to be the next Sancho? <laughs> I mean, yes and no. I don't want to see his target an English player. I don't. I don't. I, I would rather look elsewhere than look for for Noni, in, in my opinion. I'd rather find someone who uh, has the option of 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 not going to the Prem. And it sounds sounds weird, but it just it is what it is. He, if he comes to Dortmund, he will shine because why not? And then he will go back to the Premier League, and I don't feel like seeing that. So I'd like to stay away from Madu. Okay, but he is a good player, and if history shows anything, we will make money off of him. Kubali can be a key defensive player. He could be, potentially. It looks like their Marco Rosa is indicating it. I think we're set for next season, to be honest. <clears throat> it only depends on the formation. It depends on the formation we go with before I, I decide whether we're set. I really want Klosterman. He can play as a right back and a center back and an outside center back. Klosterman would be perfect. I don't see us affording him, though. That's the big issue. Do you think Delaney will leave? My personal opinion, 60-40 that he will leave. Uh, I think it depends, but I think if Dortmund can find the right deal for Delaney and then they can sign a young uh, replacement, I think they will do it. Maybe St. Juice comes in. I mean, Ander Silva transfers was made a max two days and we made change in the last minutes and we can buy St. Juice. We could. I mean, I haven't heard any St. Juice rumors for a while now. Uh, so we're going to have to wait and see what uh, what's being said, but I don't. I haven't seen any legitimate rumors showing that St. Juice is on his way in. Other than a right back, I don't see the need for anyone else in the squad. So I disagree. But again, it goes it goes to what Marco Rosa wants to play. We have no wingers. We can't play a proper 4-3-3 or a 4-2-3-1. Now, those are two of his favorite formations. So I feel, find it very difficult to see a new manager going into a new club and not being able to put implement his, his proper system. He can still use two other formations, I think, to success in, in the 3-4-2-1 or the 4-1-2-1-2 because we have the personnel for it. We can even kind of invert that 4-3-2-1 we played last year. But it's, his, in my opinion, his two favorite positions we can't properly play because we don't have the personnel. So that worries me a little bit going into, uh, into the uh, transfer market. It makes me look like we may need at least one winger so we can play Hazard and Maduike, for example, on the wings. Halsberg will turn 30. I know, not the profile player Dortmund likes to go for. But, I mean, for 8 mil... Pretty reasonable, very versatile, wants to be here. There could be worse transfers. The issue with me is that he lacks pace. We already have two right backs. We do. We need to sell Zagadu, Marriott. We, we will definitely sell Wolf, in my opinion. I don't think we'll sell Witzel. I could see Delaney going, and I don't know what to say about Zagadu. I, with Kubali coming in, man, if Kubali outperforms Zagadu, Zagadu's time here in Dortmund, I believe, is gone. The trophy is joined in your background. I like it. It actually fell over today. It's, it's a piece of paper taped there, but it looks good from the background. Josh, I forgot, but was De, has Dehut signed his extension? Dehut has not signed his extension, to, to what I know so far. Um, I, I will celebrate very, very, very aggressively if, if Dehut does, does eventually come in, man. I think Rosa likes Brantz. It's a similar player to Stindl. Maybe that's why he likes him a lot. Same play style. Sort of, but Stindl played in a three or in a 4-3-3. He played as a false nine a multiple amount of times. Brandt can't do that. They they are I mean they both can play the number 10 role well, but but Stindl is a good false nine. He's a very good false nine. Brandt is a very poor false nine. So I, I, I do get the similarities in terms of when they can play in a 4-2-3-1 as a 10. But if you're going to play 4 2 one as a 10, you can't tell me that Brandt's going to start over, over Royce. And that's where the issue of keeping Brandt comes in. I like Brandt. He will start every game, and Gio will play a super sub role. But again, guys, I still, it makes it so challenging to see a way that they both start with Marco Royce in there. Rosa rotates a lot, so Brandt could definitely be rotated with Royce in a 4 4 2 or a 4 2 2 diamond. He could play as a complete uh, with Royce. He could compete with Royce, and he could fit in that formation. If we went with the 4-1-2-1-2 diamond, Fitzel's your 6, Dehoud's your 8, or Bellingham is your 8. It takes one of the two out. That's the issue. Brandt could be alongside them, and then, of course, uh, Royce as a 10. And maybe Royce's legs are going to be slower down. I don't know. It's just three center attacking mids who we all want to find minutes. I find it so challenging to make this work, man. Southampton can't afford Delaney. They're in some financial trouble and probably won't stay up. Well, if Denmark go on and win the Euros, someone's going to be calling Thomas Delaney's name. Or hopefully we give him a shot, because I really liked the trident last year of Delaney as your six with Bellingham and Dehoud. I thought that was the best 
Teresic didn't really prefer prefer Delaney, and I don't think Rose is going to prefer Delaney over Witzel. So we're going to have to wait and see. Jonathan here says, good to see you streaming today, Josh. What a welcome surprise. Glad you guys are enjoying it. There was a lot of, uh, a lot of good transfer talks that we needed to get in. You guys seem to be excited today. Very excited to have you guys here as well. So hopefully you guys are enjoying it. From South Africa, feel free to drop your countries, guys. Let me know where you're watching from today. Uh, I'm obviously watching from Canada. We got someone from South Africa, a lot of fun. Feel free to drop a like as well if you're just joining us and subscribe if you are new. For me, Witzel has to get some playing time in the first half of the season. He's been great for the Belgium at the Euros and maybe a Dehoud, Jude, and Witzel. Well, in my opinion right now, I would love to see a 4-3-2-1. Right now, right as things stands, like picture this formation because it, it almost suits everyone perfectly. Kobel's in net, right back is Mounier, center back is a Kanji, Hummels, Guerrero, no big changes in the back four. And that midfield three, which in my opinion was the, was the heart and soul of the finish of last season, it would be Witzel as your six, because I do think he, he there's no way he doesn't start, with Dehoud and Bellingham, two of the most undroppable players last year. And then you got your floating cams. Now you get to take your pick out of players who could fit. Brandt, Royce, Geo. Pick two of the three, Holland up front. Pretty simple, uh, and I think it would work very well. There's a lot of comments coming in, guys. Holy, I might have to skip a few of them, but if I skip your comment, I'm sorry, just ask it again. What do you think about Rosa bringing anyone from, from Gladbach? I would like to see Thuram. I don't see Gladbach selling any players to us specifically because of the way the Marco Rosa thing went down. That's my personal opinion, so I don't think any Gladbach players will follow us. I think Halsenberg is a really bad signing for us. I That was my initial reaction as well. I think that his pace is a big issue, but the thing that I do like about him is that he's versatile. Schultz was, was almost useless last year. We, we didn't use him at all. We didn't need him. Guerrero will play most games at left back. When Guerrero doesn't play, we can use Halsenberg there. We can also use him as an outside left center back in a back three, and we can even use him as a back two if we needed to. So it's growing on me, but I still think this Dortmund team lacks pace. Why is everyone down on Halsenberg? He was at the Euros. He was, and he, I mean, he is a good player. I think people are a little bit wary about him because of his pace. I, think, I don't think anyone can disagree that that's a, a major thing that this Dortmund side lacks. Guerrero, again, very un unbelievable fullback, lacks pace. Our, our center backs with Hummels specifically lacks pace. Even our wings at times lack, lack pace. Uh, we, we don't have a very fast squad. We have Holland up front. If we bring in Mullen, I think that would very, very much help in the speed category, but it would be interesting to see what Halsenberg does. Isn't Marco Rosa a very versatile? He might go into one game with no wingers and the next game with wingers, like a 4-1-2-1-2, like a 4-2-3-1. You're spot on. He is. He's a man of many formations. He is. I just think watching this Gladbach side last season, he prefers a 4-2-3-1, 4-3-3. I don't think we have the personnel to play his favored formations. But if he's a good manager, he'll find a way to make it work. And I think he will. Rosa also likes to play with two strikers. He does. And a 4-1-2-1-2 or a 4-3-1-2 would work. Mullen, Holland, the two strikers. Royce as your cam. And then you can play with the rest of the midfield going going down. I'd sell Brant as well. It, I mean, I don't know. The only reason I'm saying that is because we have so much depth in that category. If he, we want to play with wingers, we need to bring bodies in. He's the most likely to leave. It is very interesting. It's very interesting to see what we're going to do. But from what I'm reading, man, it looks like Brant is going to be Rose's guy. If Munier can play a decent first half, do you think that Murray can replace him? I personally think he can it depends on how Thomas Mounier does. If Thomas Mounier comes in and kills it from the get-go, it'll make it harder for Murray to come in. However, I think if Mounier is kind of like he was last season, uh, that will be... Uh, I mean, if Mounier starts like he did last season, I think Emery Chan could take over that position because I just I don't think that the patience is going to be there for Thomas Mounier. I think he's going to have to get it right ASAP. If Dortmund are getting rid of Delaney... Is surely a cards as a replacement? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I, I think the fact that we have Emery Chan and Witzel as your sixes, that's enough coverage. You have then Dahoud and Delaney as your eights. Then you have Gio, Royce, and uh, and Brandt as your ten. And you can also bring up Toby if you need to. Very talented CDM. You can bring him up. What about Zaha? I personally like his attitude and skillful. Again, I just think he'd, we'd be but we'd be he'd be too expensive for us. 
Why don't Dortmund use a 4-3-1-2 formation? If they bring in Mullen, it's a formation, in my opinion, that they could do. Uh, they could also do the 3-4-2-1, two floating cams, and Holland as your striker. Yo, bro, I just found out that BBB most expensive transfer is Matt Hummels for only 35 million euros. Yes. And Andre Sherla is up there as well. I, I honestly, I, I thought Sherla was the most expensive. But yeah, we don't spend a crap load of money. We don't. But we need to go for Mullen. We absolutely do. Mullen is a great player. Would fit, no doubt. I absolutely agree. And like I said, with, with Marco Rosa, I think he wants a player like Mullen. Mullen can play on the wings. Don't forget that. Not his best formation, but he can play on the wings. Can play as a striker. Can play as a lone striker or a dual striker. We'll be very curious to see what we do. The, four, the diamond formation will work the back four with Munier, Hummels, Akanji, Guerrero. I agree. The three CMs would be Witzel as your six. Bellingham slash Chan, Dehoud. I agree. A cam of Royce, Gio, or Brandt. And I agree, but that's where the issue comes in. You're leaving then Royce or Gio, Royce or Brandt, one of, two of the three on the bench, which I, I don't think is going to help Brandt, man. If you want to keep Brandt here, you play him. If not, you sell him and get your money's worth. With Mullen and Holland up front. I absolutely agree. On paper, the diamond looks looks beautiful. It can obviously, like I said, there's a couple of formations that can uh, be very similar in the 3-4-2-1, but that's the issue I have. If you want Brandt to stay, you need to play him because I have not seen near enough from, from Brandt to indicate that he will be here for the long term if he does not get playing minutes. I think we should go for Mullen, but not Madu, okay? Mullen has a combination of Aubameyang and Sancho. I agree, I agree too. I mean, I, I want Mullen in. I've said that for a long, long time. And it also, guys, when it comes to Dortmund, when it comes to not having a proper backup striker, big issue for me. I We lost, in my wholehearted opinion, we lost that season uh, to Bayern because we didn't have an adequate striker when Paco wasn't playing. No reason, no way we were winning the league with Mario Götze playing as a false nine. I'm sorry, but that is exactly where we lost games. We didn't take our chances. This upcoming season, if something happens to Holland, like he went down for four games last season. We aren't playing Hazard. We aren't playing Brandt. We aren't playing Royce as a false nine. That will not win you games. Having someone like Mullen be able to step in when needed is perfect. And you can also play the two striker formations. So for me, Mullen has to be number one. And then it depends on Marco Rosen, how he's going to play. If uh, Maduike is going to come in. Swap Schultz for Halsenberg. Schultz plus 10 mil. Yeah, no. I mean, they have Angelino, so I don't see Schultz... Going to Leipzig, I see us selling him separately, and then going for Halsenberg. You can hopefully go and watch the match. The, the, that'd be very cool. I don't. I don't know. I haven't. I haven't. Uh, s s I haven't heard about how the the Bundesliga are going to do attendance in the stadium, because I would love to see fans get pumped back into the stadiums. I don't know if anyone has any in input on that. Be sure to let me know. Imagine if Mullen and Matuke both flop. Uh, that would be painful. I hope Hummels puts Kubali under his wing. He would be a class if that happens. Kubali looks like everything to succeed. Pace, strength, can't wait. He basically is the Zagadou we were hoping for. He's a very similar, in my opinion, very similar type of player to Zagadou. Zagadou's injuries have riddled his career so far. So yeah, I'm hoping a little bit of the same. Kubali comes in, can learn. But like I said, guys, it's a flashback. When you give a young player a number, and that's a beautiful thing about football kits. Numbers mean stuff. It'd be a lot, I'd feel a lot differently, and it sounds weird, I'd feel a lot differently if we gave Kubali number 37, or 38, or 39, whatever number is not taken. You give him a high number, it indicates that he'll be used sparingly. We gave Jane Sancho number 7. We are giving this kid a chance. This, to me, sounds like we're giving Kubali a chance, and I'm very excited to see what this young kid can do. How long is the Murray injury? I believe November-ish. Correct me, guys, if you think I'm, if I'm, if I'm a little off. I believe November is when he'd be coming back. How about Richie Larea at Dortmund? I mean, when it look when it comes to uh, when it comes to fullbacks, I wouldn't mind it. I would take Buchanan if I'm looking at a Canadian to come into Dortmund. I would look at Buchanan before because he can play as a fullback, he can play as a wingback, he can play as a attacker, a lot of pace. That makes a lot more sense to me than Richie Larea. I think Richie Larea will end up in uh, the Turkish league, in my opinion. What do you think about Ansgar Knauf? Ansgar Knauf, in my opinion, has the potential for a breakout season if we don't sign any wingers. Because if we don't have wingers right now, and where are you going to use a 4-3-3? Hazard, Knauf right now are, are my, my wingers. 4-2-3-1, Hazard, Knauf. I think he's got a big opportunity to make some, some uh, impacts at this season if we uh, don't sign a, another winger. How good is Marco Rosa? 
Marco Rosa had an excellent season with Gladbach when they finished fourth. He had a very poor season by his standards last year. Uh, a lot of people, we had a debate of whether Marco Rosa is the best manager in the Bundesliga. And I said, no, you, you can't finish eighth with Gladbach and say you're the best manager. That does not how it works. He's an unbelievably young, talented manager, and I think that this is a perfect opportunity for him. I believe a lot of this, the poor season under Gladbach went on the fact that he has eyes on Dortmund. I think that if Marco Rosa can do something special this year, best coach in the Bundesliga is up for grabs. But right now, after the poor Gladbach season he had, he's, he's one of the best managers, and I think that he's the right man moving forward for Borussia Dortmund. I'm very excited that Edin Terzic took the, his new role with BBB. Uh, I think it was a beautiful step for him, and it allows Marco Rosa to come in and implement everything exactly like he wants. I have very high hopes for him, uh, but I, he's got a lot to prove. I want the Bundesliga to develop and sign more of our German talents. Hmm. It's very interesting, Angie. You think that they need more help? It, and it's funny because, like, obviously the Germans just won the, the Euros, the U21 Euros, but, yeah, I mean... It, 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 is, it is a trend you see with, with the Bundesliga sometimes going for young, I mean, especially young French talents, young English talents, developing, developing them into massive superstars and then obviously selling them on. But yeah, it's not a bad show. Hi guys, how are you doing? Like the video. How you doing, my friend? Hope you are doing well. Dortmund lacks leadership. Halsenberg could feel that. We do, we do have a young team and we don't usually go for veteran presences. So... It's a reason that the, the transfer is growing on me. Again, I just still think he, he lacks pace. Mullen would be closer to Liverpool than Dortmund. Is this right? No, I don't think so. I think Mullen is closer to, to, to Dortmund. If I've noticed anything from following Dortmund transfers from the past 10 plus years, it's the fact that if, if the sale of Jane Sancho was going down, Dortmund was well aware. And they, are, they have planned accordingly to do so. I... I I personally feel, and guys, this is just my opinion, I personally feel a deal with Mullen is in place. And if it's not Mullen, it's someone else. And I, I just, from what I've read, it seems like the Mullen deal is a gentleman's agreement. It seems like he's coming in. It seems like it's going to be the perfect fit. And in my opinion, he's closer to Dortmund than he is Liverpool. I don't see Liverpool pulling the trigger for this. Uh, but we're going to have to wait and see. Because Dortmund usually is, is very good with what they do, and that is replacing Sancho adequately. Nah, man, what happened to Brandt? Wings, skills, back to Leverkusen. He played pretty decently. Um, Brandt was not... I'm not sure what you mean. Winger skills? Brandt, Brandt needs to play through the middle. That's He needs to play... He played at Leverkusen in a 4-3-3. Him and Havertz played as kind of dual eights. Played it very, very well. Uh, he can't... Brandt can't play in the wing. You can't waste his talents on the wing or as a false nine. He needs to play as an eight or he needs to play as a ten or he shouldn't play at all. That is my opinion. A lot of comments coming in. I am so far behind. Ronnie's watching from Portugal. I recently read that Dortmund believe that Zagadou is the future. I haven't read that. I'd, I'd find that very surprising, but we'll have to wait and see. Hopefully Zagadou can get healthy and, and prove that article right. What do you, at which rank BBB will finish next season? Going into every season, like I said, Dortmund should, at the bare minimum, be second. So if you're asking me what I think that they will finish... It is, it is second with an op optimistic first. I do think they can challenge. I think that this is a massive, massive season in the Bundesliga, given all the ch managerial changes. Uh, even without Sancho, I see Dortmund competing with the best, but they need to get it right and hope up that Nagelsmann slips. Guys, please like the stream. It would be much appreciated. Thanks for the shout out, my man. How much did that BVB ball cost? I'm not even sure. Like... 15 bucks, maybe, Canadian. Mo both Matuake and Mullen would be perfect. Halsberg is an okay addition if Schultz leave. I just love Delaney and would like to see him stay. He's better than Vitzel. I I agree with a lot of what you say. I agree with a lot of what you say. Uh, I, I think they need to fix... Marco Rosa needs to figure out what he wants to do. If he's okay without playing with wingers, then I don't believe we need to bring in Madu, okay? Because that would give Gio and Brandt a lot of options to play. If he wants to play his traditional 4-3-3, 4-2-3-1... He needs to sell, <laughs> man. He can't, he can't rock all three of the camps. He needs to bring in another winger and Mullen. I think Mullen right now is perfect to bring in. I'm not sold on Maduike or any winger, depending on if we're keeping Brandt. Halsenberg is a fine addition if Schultz leaves. Lacks pace, but brings in leadership, brings in versatility. I'd be fine with that. The Delaney one is interesting. I was a big fan of Thomas Delaney. Thought he complimented Dehoud and Bellingham very well. I don't think with Witzel coming back, Delaney will be 
will be uh, will be preferred. I see Delaney even potentially getting sold with no replacement and, and bumping up Toby Rashel to the uh, to the, I guess the third type CDM with Vitzel, Chan, and then and then Toby. That's my opinion. Rosa likes Brandt, in my opinion, and since he's German, he's probably going to stay a little longer. So if Rosa can get the best out of Brandt, then I'd prefer him to Geo because of the playing time in his prime. It'd be fine. You guys are very optimistic about Brandt, and I like it. It's, it's very different perspectives. Brandt has never really done it for me at Dortmund, even though I know that there's a, a real baller in there. But to Brandt's defense, he's been mostly played out of position. So Marco Rosa decides that Brandt's his guy. See that... See that 4-3-2-1. See that 3-4-2-1 come into play because it will utilize Brandt's strengths. If we play, if we use the 4-2-3-1 tactic, I think Marco Rosa will use Royce, our Brandt, as a left midfielder or as a left wing. Um, I think you mean, I'm assuming you're, you're saying if we play a 4-2-3-1, they will use Royce on the wing rather than Brandt, which I don't think is Marco Royce's, I don't think it's Marco Rosa's best, Marco Royce's best position right now. I really don't. I, I don't think he's he's that same winger he used to be. I think Royce likes playing as the ten, and I mean he's he's a Dortmund legend. He's a club captain. He he gave up the Euros to prolong his club career. I I that's the reasons I don't find Brandt ever being preferred to Marco Royce. Maybe Marco Royce has a chat with Marco Rosa and says I'll give it a go on the wing. But for me, I think Royce wants to play through the middle, and I think that's definitely at this point in his career where he's at the best. Jared's here. Jared, how you doing, my man? Long time no see. Hope you're doing well. Schultz has put in a lot of work in the offseason. Two strong seasons before joining Dortmund, and his poor performances came after a major ankle injury. I say Schultz gets a chance. It's a fair shout. I, I, don't, I don't agree with it, and I don't think it'll happen, only because I just think his confidence has been so shot. It's the same sort of issue that goes with Brandt, even though I don't think Brandt has been killed so much, and this is the reason why I think Schultz needs to move on. Is because even if even if he decided to play some good-looking football, he will never be preferred to Guerrero. He'll always be a backup role. And when you lack confidence, when you lack game time, it's almost impossible to find a rhythm. And that's the reason that I think that when they brought him in, Guerrero just took on that left-back role completely for himself and didn't give Nico Schultz a shot. And it showed because he never played. And when he did, he was scapegoated. A lot of the, all the poor matches we had. And I just think the best thing for him is if you want to get your career back on track, you need to play. You will not be playing at Dortmund. And I believe that's why they're thinking of shifting him out, bringing in Halsenberg, who again, he isn't solely going to be there to play as a left back because Guerrero will be playing most of the time. When Guerrero isn't available, Halsenberg can easily step in as a left back, but can also be utilized in many other positions like a back three outside left center back or even in a back four. He can play as, a, as inside left center back as well, along with Hummels or, or Kanji. So I get what you're saying, my man. I, that's the reason I don't see Schultz staying. I think he's going to move on because he simply isn't going to get the minutes he probably needs to, to grow as a player. Heard that Rosa would prefer to play the diamond formation, two strikers up front, so Mullen would be a realistic option. I heard in, in a couple of my German friends told me a couple of the interviews that Marco Rosa was doing mentioned the two striker formation. I still personally don't think it's his favorite. But given the personnel that we have, and if we bring in Mullen, it's a very strong look. I still don't see a, I don't see, if we don't bring in wingers, I still don't see a 4-1-2-1-2 being the formation we play the majority of the season. I would see a 4-3-2-1 followed by a 3-4-2-1 followed by the 4-1-2-1-2. Those are the formations I see right now Marco Rosa implementing without wingers. But he will 100% at one point use that formation. And I'm very curious to see the way he does. I'd really like to see Jeremy Doku in Dortmund. I would too, after that stellar performance he had. Obviously, I mean, a lot of a lot of clubs will be gunning for him. I don't see him coming to Dortmund, but we'll have to see. Why would Hossenberg come back when he's already have Guerrero or pass like as a backup? Don't you think that it's a priority for our midfield? I don't trust Brandt, and I don't think Delaney will leave. So my opinion on this, when I'm looking at positions that we need to strengthen, our keeper is now settled. I would love to strengthen the right back position. We will not. I, I've said this wholeheartedly for the better part of four months. It's going to be Mounier, Murray when he comes back, Chan can even play there at Paslak. That's not going to be touched. Kubali indicates that the center back position is barely going to be touched as well. Left back position doesn't need to be touched because of, of Guerrero, but in my opinion, this is the reason for the Halsenberg signing, is that they're going to get rid of Schultz, knowing full well that he's not going to play. They're going to bring in Halsenberg, who can play as a left back when needed, but he can also play as an outside left center back, and he can also play in a back four. 
So he's very versatile. He sounds like he's going to have cheap wages and he's not going to cost a lot of money to bring in, which allows us to flip Schultz and actually make a profit. That is the reason for Hasselberg. Um, and Paslak, in my opinion, will not be trusted whatsoever. Paslak should never start as a left back. So we do need a left back if Schultz leaves. And I think Schultz wants to leave, which is the reasoning behind this. Uh, I don't think, don't you think that the priority would be the midfield? No, absolutely not. There's no way that the midfield should be a priority. Uh, I, I get what you're saying about not trusting Brandt, but that's the reason of having Gio, who could break out at any point, as well as Royce above him. We have two of the best eights in the league, I'm thinking, right now, next season with uh, Bellingham and Dehoud. And we also have depth in the CDMs. Delaney, Witzel, Chan. So no, I don't see them strengthening that. I haven't heard any rumors to indicate that they will. What we lack right now is wingers. By far, we lack wingers. We don't have any wingers. We can't play a proper winger-type formation. But we're going to have to wait and see what Marco Rosa wants to do. But I do think if we don't bring wingers in, it will potentially hurt Marco Rosa because that's his favorite formation, and we can't play it. Brandt needs to improve uh, in his decision-making on the pitch. Rosa will see that as his weakness. There is a lot he needs to do, man. If Mounier is like last season, then it's by next year. Angie, I agree. I, I think that they're banking on the fact he's going to have a bounce back here, and the fact that if he doesn't, Murray will eventually come back. Who will replace Holland if he leaves? Mullen plays a one striker formation. In my opinion, if Holland leaves, Mullen takes his formation or takes his position as a lone striker, and we replace him with a winger. Last year, they gave Pichek spot to the only player on the council to Delaney. Would be weird if they let him go for less than a year. It would be. It would be. I mean, there's been a lot of there's been a lot of rumors about him going to the Prem. Apparently, it's Thomas Delaney's dream. I don't know too much into it. I think they've kind of kind of relaxed a little bit, but we'll have to wait and see. Berkey to Lil. That's funny. I've been ye I've been yelling that for a long time. I think he'd be perfect for Lil. A Lil uh, fan reached out to me on Twitter and said that they can't afford his wages. So I mean, it seems perfect. The price is is cheap. He'd be an awesome replacement to go to Lille, play the Champions League, play in Liga. Uh, but it sounds like if it was to happen, Berkey would have to take a wage cut. Brand's value is barely 20 mil. If Rosa trusts him, we should keep him a season uh, more than. It sounds like we're gonna. It sounds like Brandt could be Rosa's guy, man. We need a right back. We do, but we will not sign one. How do you rate Verse from Leverkusen? I rate him so highly, man. I'm a massive, massive fan of Florian Verse. I think he's going to have an excellent career. Hopefully he stays in the Bundesliga as long as he can. And if he does, hopefully he doesn't go to Bayern. I don't know if Dortmund will look at him down the line or not. Don't think Holland will be sold to Chelsea this season. I'm 95% sure Holland will stay another year, man. I think Ansgar is a good replacement for uh, Sancho. Um, he tried to be like Sancho. I think that the potential's there, but it's the dangerous thing about if we really realistically want to compete and win a Bundesliga title, I don't know if, if Ansgar is going to be the guy to do it. It's, it's like I said, going into the season, it's a Dortmund thing. And by meaning that, you don't know what you're going to get until the season starts. Someone's going to break out this season. It may be a new signing. It may be Ansgar Canal. It may be Gio Reyna. Someone is going to break out, and it depends how big their breakout is to give us a actual chance to compete. But expectations for this season, as they always are for me, win the poke call, because why not? Need silverware, love that trophy. Minimum of a quarterfinal appearance in the Champions League, minimum of second place in the Bundesliga. But in my opinion, all focus for me is on the Bundesliga. I personally think if Nagelsmann can't get it right, pressure will hit him and Bayern could slip up. But that also means that Marco Rosa has to nail it. Angie says, I know that you're not crazy about tickets, but I want to see him get more playing time. He's good for the second team, but could really improve getting time with these players. I, it's not that I'm not crazy about tickets. It's not that I'm not crazy, because I think that he's an awesome, awesome player. I think he's got great personality, good worth ethic, and a solid finisher. The issue I have with Tigas is the fact that he is 22. He's, old, he's, he's quite older than a, a young player breaking out through Borussia Dortmund. The other issue is that, in my opinion, he's not going to touch the first team, for, especially if we get Daniel Mollet. We have Holland. If Holland's not starting, it falls to Mullen. And even if the, both of those two can't play or if they're going to try squeezing someone else, Mukuku will always be preferred to Tigas. Tigas just will not break into the squad. And I think he's either going to stay and probably captain the U23s in the third division, or he may get a permanent transfer to the second, a team in the Bundesliga 2. 
That's my opinion. Do you know that Delaney suffers from colorblindness? I did not know that. <laughs> did you guys know that? <laughs> That's wild, man. Just a recommendation, Josh, but some background music could be cool. That's a great show. That is a great show. I'm going to talk to producer T and see what we can do about that. Um, I've been trying to get, I've been trying to stream a lot lately. Producer T has been a little, little busy, but I, that's an excellent, excellent shout to producer T and I'll see if for the next stream, we could throw something nice on in the background for you guys. Kubali Young CB has been assigned the number four shirt at BBB website. Is he in line to play for the first team next season? Yes, Tom, he is. He is. And I, and this is like, this is a perfect point. I made this point a little bit early in the stream. But it's a fact when you give a, a kit number like that away, there's potential. And like I said, the last time that happened with Brucey e. Dortmund was number seven. It was Jaden Sancho. Look what happened. To me, Kuobali just jumped up the pecking order by simply giving him the number four kit. And I'm excited to see what the, the kid can do. And we're going to get a good look at him, hopefully, in some preseason games. Zagadou is too injury prone, which is another reason why I think that Kuobali, if he can get it right, is going to skyrocket past Zagadou. I just joined the transfer happening. No transfers are happening officially yet, but from what we're reading is that the Mullen deal, in, in my opinion and what I'm reading, should happen. I don't, I don't know when, but it should happen. It seems like he's going to come to Dortmund. It seems like Halsenberg potentially could come to Dortmund, but it'll depend if we flip Schultz. Someone has to leave for him to come in. So ideally, Dortmund finds a way to sell Nico Schultz. They bring in Halsenberg, and that is the replacement. And then the third one is Maduke. And there's been a lot of a lot of articles going around, a lot of rumors that we could pull the double swoop at PSV. I don't think that we personally should, uh, unless we're going to sell a, a player like Brandt. But it doesn't look like Brandt's leaving. So right now, nothing's happening. But I, I just I tweeted out earlier, my opinion is the next two signings coming in will be Mollen and Halsenberg. We will get a CB. CB will be will be Halsenberg. That's that's the, the duo. The, the promotion of Kuobali as well as the depth of Halsenberg, who can then play on the left back as well, and selling Schultz. That is what I see right now. Mullen is a crucial target. If Maduke comes, he would be with Mullen or just doesn't come. I agree. From Again, what I'm reading, Mullen is priority number one. They know he's not a like-for-like like for Sancho, but they want him. Because like I said, when Holland inevitably moves on, he will then replace him. I'm worried Gia won't get playing time. I'm worried about that too. And I, there's nothing I can... There's nothing I can really say about it. I just I think that there's a huge opportunity that Brant or Geo will not have another good year. Nobody wants Mullen or Maduke double transfer. Sell Holland for 170 million. Spend it on Tammy Avery. <laughs> I can't tell if you're being serious or you're poking fun at me. A lot of issues with that. Um, I would rather no one than Tammy Abraham. No disrespect, with a little bit of disrespect towards Tammy Abraham. I. We don't want to sell Holland for 170. I'd rather I'd rather see him if we have to rather him move on next season for 75 and sell him now for 170 with the point that his replacement will be the same. I, I want Holland here this season because if we want to compete for the Bundesliga, which is my dream, we need Holland. And if Holland is sold, I'm going to be completely realistic and know that we will not win shit. That's just how it is, man. We need Holland, um, and I absolutely want Holland. I will take both Holland and Maduke, but I. Uh, I, I, I want genuinely just want Mullen. I need Holland to stay. And don't mention Tammy Abraham. Not in a million years. Uh, bruh, seriously, Schultz is the only player I hate in BBB. His own goal against Frankfurt is still the weakest. Uh, well, I do think he's going to move back. I, was, I, don't, I, don't, I don't hate anybody on, on Dortmund, but I do think it's best for Schultz to move on. And I think that Schultz will move on. Is Koble really the right goalkeeper for us? Whether he is or whether he isn't is undecided, but we'll see this season. I wasn't sold on him, um, but he is the type of player we see Dortmund going for. So it's the it's the risk first reward, baby. Small smallish investment on a player that could blow up. I think he's got the right attitude. And he's got Bundesliga experience. It's not a for sure thing, but there's a big chance that he is the right man for us moving forward. I think Holland is the type of player where. He'll be good by himself up front. I don't see him um, and Mullen being a working duo. That's that agents. That is a, no one has brought up that point yet, and it is a fair point. 
I've only ever really seen Holland play with Dortmund in a lone striker. However, he played at Salzburg, which they're famous for their 4-4-2. So Holland has played with a duo up front. So, I mean, it's an interesting point. I'm not saying that Holland can't do it because he has done it in the past with Salzburg. What role do you see Makuku having? Should he be loaned out to a mid-table Bundesliga team like Hoffenheim or Augsburg or Mainz? Potentially. I'm very confident we won't loan him out. Uh, which is, again, I mean, it's hard. This is a kid who has so much hype around him, smashing records left, right, and center. In my opinion, he doesn't start in our best 11. If we, if we need to, we need, obviously, but like, I don't, I don't find a real, a real way to play him, just a lot from the bench. I said I see him starting 10 games, playing in 20 this upcoming season, scoring about five goals. That was my guess. So yeah, I mean, I would totally be open to loaning him out as long as he gets minutes. Could even be in the second Bundesliga, but... I have an issue with keeping him because I don't see Mukuku playing, and if Mukuku plays, it's, it's going to take out players who probably should be playing instead of him, just because he's so young. I don't know. It's a very tricky subject. I think we have wingers. Gio is kind of a winger, Malin can play as a winger. <laughs> not really, though. Like That's, that's the issue. Um, Gio is not a winger, and Malin is not a winger. Malin is a striker, but he, he has pace, which can make him play on, on the wings, but it's not his best position. Gio is a 1-5, and, and that's the way I've described him. Gio is a 1-5 winger. One game, four week games, and that's not good enough. Unless Gio just randomly breaks out and becomes a, a, a natural, fantastic winger, which is a risk, we need a winger. So that's, that's my opinion, even though a lot of U.S. Men's National Team fans says he's been okay on the wing, but he's a better, he's a better 10 than he is a winger. Um, so having two players who are better in other positions playing on the wings isn't convincing for me to think that we can compete. I'm not sure we will win this season, but in the near future, Lewandowski, Mola, Kimmich will fall from grace and our chances will be established. Could happen. Could happen. I do think we have a chance this year, but it could happen. Especially with Lewandowski leaving, man. Finding good goal scores like that will be, will be crazy. Oscar, my guy. Long time, no seed. If we get Mola, Maduke, and a right back, then it'd be a perfect summer. For me, I mean, there's no way we sign a right back. I will wholeheartedly say that right now. There's 0% chance we sign a right back. And if I'm wrong, I look like an idiot. But I'm positive. I'm, I'm very convinced that, I'm, that whether you think it's good or bad, Mune will start the season, and then Murray will probably come in and pick up the pace if Mune doesn't hit the ground running. Mullen, I think, will come in. And then I'm torn. I, I don't know what Marco Rosa wants to do with this team. Because we need a winger if we want to play those winger formations. And Maduike is fine. But again, he's not even my preferred target. The kid started... And he's a good, good young, talented kid. He, to me, he looks like someone we could bring in, develop, and then sell for a lot of money. Is that what you guys want? Because it's not really what I want. I'd rather go with so, someone, see, someone like Leon Bailey. We sign Leon Bailey on his five-year deal. He stays for five years. We sign Maduike on a five-year deal. We probably sell him in three for a, a crap load of money. So take your pick. I'm not sold on Maduike, but he is a good young player. We'll have to see. Can't wait to see Uba Makano and Nagelsmann slip up. My guy, I'm hoping. I feel like Bayern slips every season and then just murders them after the winter break. Yeah. Yeah. Tickets is good. Um, he's not fast, in my opinion. He is good, but again, he just, he's not going to get the looks at, at this level. I think Gio only had seven goals this season, but they were pretty impressive. I know I'm from an American, but he does show a lot of potential. Gio does have a massive amount of potential, but again, I think he's best as a 10. And with Brandt now apparently being preferred with, with Royce, Gio's going to get stuck playing on the wings where, like I said, he's a 1-5 from what I've seen this season. He's, he's very quiet in a few games when he plays on the wings, and then he lights up one game. Usually, he's, he's more consistent through the middle. White says, FIFA stream today? Maybe. Maybe in the afternoon. I might, I might, yeah, I might, I might, I might, I'll let, you, I'll let you guys know. Who will get the number seven shirt? There's been two rumors. One, probably Mullen. Two, maybe outside shot, Gio. Gio wears number seven for the U.S. Men's National Team. He may be indication of a bigger role. I don't know. Tell you what, if, if Gio takes the number seven shirt, I, if Gio takes the number seven shirt, I could see Brant leaving. If only because it's it's gonna be one or the other. If Brant stays, I guarantee Geo doesn't get handed the number seven because it seems like Brant's gonna be ahead of the pecking order than Geo. We really weird bold claim I just made, but I don't know. In my head, it kind of made sense. 
Damn, so Kubali is coming just like Zagadu did. Hopefully he doesn't get injured. Yeah, I see Kubali as a very similar storyline to Zagadu. Just, in my opinion, hopefully more potential, less injury prone, and honestly, uh, a little bit more concentration. I think that Mullen will use the number 7 or maybe Brandt. I don't think Brandt will switch. I think Brandt likes the number 19. He wore, wore number 19 at Leverkusen. He preferably would want number 10, but he won't get that number. Uh, I could see Geo taking 7, or I could see more than likely Mullen. Perser T said you can't you do background music with StreamYard. Well, that's a shame. I'll maybe have to learn how to do OBS a little bit better. No background music. Not a good fit for a talk show, in my opinion. There's another application we could use, but I'll see what I can do. Why didn't we keep Isaac? We, I mean, A, he wanted to move on. He did move on, and uh, he just wouldn't come back. Even if we wanted to bring him back, he's not going to start over Holland. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's a shame because he, he was a young player, but he wasn't getting the minutes. He made the right decision to move on to Sociedad because he completely turned around his career, got to where he is now. Uh, again, even if we were going to bring him back now, it still wasn't the right right call. So we got a little bit of money to get rid of the release clause. It just, yeah. Unfortunately, this was the wrong timing, I guess, for a man. But if you make the music really low sound. I'll talk to Producer T, see if we can do something. If not, maybe I'm going to have to switch over to OBS, which Producer T keeps encouraging me to use so I can get some background music for you guys. If Kubali is now promoted to the first team, does that mean it's unlikely to go for another center back? Yes, Tom, in my opinion, this completely changed my thought process. If Kubali didn't get that number four kit, I think that this, the chances of signing St. Juice were higher. The fact that he were clearly indicating that Kubali is going to be a part of this squad, we gave him number four. I don't see us signing St. Juice, period. And then another clever way around it, which is growing on me. So say we just leave it at that. We have young Koulibaly, he, he's got the potential to play. We also have Guerrero who's going to play basically all the games at left back, and then Nico Schultz who, who will do nothing, basically. A way around that is you sell Nico Schultz for potentially 10 to 15, you reinvest 8 of it in Halsenberg, now you have a veteran presence who can play as a left back when needed when Guerrero can't play, can play as an outside left center back, and can play as a center back if Koulibaly doesn't work out. I think that's perfect. I do think it's a perfect strategical signing and that's the, in, my, in my reasoning, that's the reason I see them doing it. And the reason why I don't see St. Juice coming in. I see Halsenberg being that veteran presence, playing in the center back when needed, giving Kubali the chance, and then he can also play on, on the left when Guerrero maybe is, is, is suspended or isn't fit or even goes up the pitch. Which three players would you want Dortmund to sell? Three players I want Dortmund to sell. Before I say so, guys, be sure to drop a like on the stream. Subscribe if you guys are new. And you guys can feel free to answer this question as well. But if I was looking to sell three Dortmund players right now, I mean, it's kind of easy because, and I don't know if this is the cheap way out, but I mean, Berkey <laughs> would sell him. Uh, Marius Wolf would sell him. And then a third one. Hmm. Well, Schultz, yeah. It's very, it's very simple. <laughs> it's very simple. Those are the three main ones I would sell. Without question. What rating would you give Royce, Brandt, and Holland? I would give Holland an 88 rating. I would give Royce an 86, and I would give Brandt an 82 or an 83. Brandt didn't do anything for me last season, man. I don't know. Let me, and again, if you guys want to chip in on those, you can do that as well. No, no, I really don't want to loan him out. And we probably won't. We probably won't. I don't see us loaning out Mukuku. Did Rosa manage Salzburg when Holland was playing? I don't think so. I thought it was Jesse Marsh, but you guys can correct me if, if I'm wrong. I honestly don't remember. Gio is not a winger. James, and I agree. Koble was on first place before Neuer at TransferMark.com as a hope the as the highest overall rating. Berkey was second place. Interesting. Very interesting. Munir's on fire, pretty sure that he's going to have an explosive season. A lot of Dortmund fans are banking on the fact that our boy is going to have a good bounce back season. Not crazy to think of. Not crazy to think of, man. Who will be the next player to replace Hummels after he decides to retire? Well, after today, man, Kubali. Why not? Why not think so? We just gave this young lad the number four kit, clearly indicating that he's going to have a massive, massive season, big potential. I'm excited, man. I'm excited. So, yeah. Kubali, especially if he's got the potential to, to have a breakout season this year. 
Uh, I'm very excited. They're, they're, they rate him very, very highly. I mean, don't think I it would happen, but someone like Kyle Walker-Peters would be great for right back for Dortmund. Uh, maybe, maybe, but again, <laughs> and here's the funny thing. I bet you if we targeted uh, Kyle Walker-Peters, he would cost about 15 plus mil. You could buy Denzel Dumfries for 15 mil, man. I don't want to see us go for any English players. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, maybe I'm biased. Uh, I know that there could be cash cows for us. Sign him young, sell him high, but there's also the trend has been noticed. I mean, we signed Bellingham for a good chunk of money. Tammy Abraham is stupidly overvaluated. Uh, same as Calum hudson Adoy. I mean, you're spending 40 million for players who haven't proved anything really. Um, and I think another English player would be the same. I don't want to see another English player sign for Dortmund. I, I just, I don't. I absolutely don't. All they're going to do is they're going to make us some money and then we're going to sell them in a few years' time. Tigas is the next Gutsa. What do you think? No. Not even close. Mario Gutsa was, uh, had the potential of being a world-class player and was absolutely phenomenal at, I think, like the age of 17, 18. His career blew up pretty much from going to Bayern and as well as the injuries. Um, Tigas is older. He's 22. I don't know how, I don't think he's got a very high ceiling in my opinion. I think he'll probably move on to the, the second Bundesliga and maybe at one point play for a, a lower end Bundesliga side, but definitely not the next Gutsa. Now, if you said Makuku, that'd be a little bit different story. From what I've heard, PSV are asking 30 mil. If we are actually going to spend, why do we not do it on someone like Bailey or Akone? Well, Mullins our number one target, so that's, that's why. Uh, Akone... Those rumors apparently were were BS. Leon Bailey, excellent shout, but I don't know how I don't know I don't know how keen Leverkusen are to sell their one of their best players to their rivals. Same as any Gladbach rumors, but no chance for tickets in my opinion. Me, me too. Josh, can you play FIFA with the fans? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Put some ideas in. If you guys want to want to get on Twitch today, maybe we could uh, maybe we could have a fun little uh, FIFA tournament of some sort. I'm not sure how to do it, but I'm I'm open. I'm open for it. Being okay as a winger for the U.S. team doesn't make it good enough for the Bundesliga. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I've, I feel like I've been very stern on that. Geo, Brandt, aren't wingers. End of, end of discussion. I'm guessing it's pretty hard for a club like Dortmund who spends modest money to keep great players long-term. How are we able to keep Royce for so long? Royce is a Dortmund boy through and through. But there are potential of keeping long, players long-term. Guerrero's been here for a while. Akanji's been here for a while. I have a feeling Geo... Could be here for a while as well. Uh, it's it's a different, it's obviously a different environment being in the Bundesliga, being in a club like this. But there are there are are a lot of talent and a lot of quality that could convince players to stay. Guerrero is unbelievable. I love watching him each and every week, and I think he'll be here for the long term. Same as Akanji. Royce is a is obviously a weapon. Brandt wants to stay, so it, it yeah. I mean, it depends. It's specific starters that eventually will move on. Sancho was one. Holland will be one. Dortmund will win the 2021-22 UEFA Champions League. I mean, I don't even think we will, but I like the, I like the positivity. But I think we have more of a chance to win the Bundesliga, in my in my opinion. I don't know if you remember, but Hoffenheim used to wear or Hoffman used to wear number seven for Dortmund at a time. I already realized his potential. I don't know where he fell through for Dortmund, but he looks good now. Jonas Hoffman's an excellent player right now for Gladbach. Very good. Can play through the middle. Can play, plays as center mid sometimes. Plays on the wings. Very versatile player that uh, Marco Rosa really enjoyed using. But yes, he did wear the number seven. And then when he left, Kagawa pick, pick, picked it up for half a season. And then, of course, uh, our boy Sancho did. What about JJD TV intro music? Well, we're going to we're gonna, we're gonna try to get Taylor's little brother to create some music for us. I don't know if we will ever do that, but maybe, maybe. Thorgan Hauser is a good winger and a center, center forward. We can't forget about our number 10. He is, but again, he needs to stay healthy and... Um, Stay consistent, man. Josh, what are your thoughts on Damsgaard? Phenomenal, man. Phenomenal Euros. He's a winger by trade and has been by far the best player in the uh, the Danish squad. Will cost thirty to thirty five. Yeah, uh, it, it's sometimes sometimes tricky going for players who have a breakout tournament because it's it's a risk versus reward. Renato Sanchez is a perfect example. Bayern snapped him up after a phenomenal Euro appearance. It was it was it was crap. Um, I think Dan has got a lot of potential, 20 years old. He's going to cost a lot of money right now. Going to have a lot of competition for him, but I mean, if we could, I would take him, but I think we'd get priced out pretty easily. Remember when Terrence tried Guerrero at the number 10 position? 
Well, it was more of an eight than a ten. But yeah, he played. He played him in a. We played him in a four three two one and and played him as kind of an eight. Backup left back will be Halsenberg if our boy Schultz moves on, and uh, and yeah, that's. I think that's what's going to happen right now, unless uh, unless something changes. But Kubale isn't going to start over Kanji, is he? He he isn't. And that's where it's going to be interesting to see how Kubali breaks in. Now, if there's a three-back formation, Kubali can play outside left back because he's a left footer, or outside left center back because he's left footer, Hummels through the middle of Kanji on the right. There's a chance, man. Thoughts on keeping Wolf as peace check replacement since Mounier only performed for the national duty. I would sell Wolf as quickly as I could. You, we have a ton of options at right back. We have Mounier who could have a bounce back here. It's not unrealistic. If he doesn't, we have Emery Chan who will slide in because I don't personally want Emery Chan anywhere near the middle of the park. I, I truly don't. I don't. He's way he's way too impulsive in my opinion to be playing there. I think Vitzel's much more trusted. I need I need Dehoud and Delaney or Bellingham on the pitch before Chan. So Chan has an opportunity there at right back if Mune slips up. Murray will come back from injury and you even have Passlack. So I don't think we need Wolf too. He would just sit there and rot on the bench. Get some money from him. Holland was at Salzburg with Rosa, but was injured and not playing. Thank you, Angie, for that. So I'm assuming his breakout season was under Jesse Marsh. They bought Holland while Rosa was there. Also, the right back position is a good quality wise, but not quantity <laughs> quantity wise, but not quality wise. I love for Mooney to be better, but I don't see it. St. Juice can be a right back. So I disagree with a lot of what you're saying. Well, not a lot. I agree with the fact that you're spot on. We have a lot of quantity wise right backs not quality wise i agree with that 100 percent. i would love for munia to be better i agree with you there um i don't see us ever addressing the right back position but there is potential emery chan for times can be a decent right back i think being shifted up to the wings as a right back could keep him away from the middle of the park where i find him slipping up a lot he's also very very quick and he's got a defensive awareness to his game murray again can come in and pass like a lot like you said not the most quality right back but if Mooney has a bounce back season, we're laughing. The issue I had with the St. Juice one was that a lot of people said we want St. Juice to come in because he can play as a right back. I don't believe that. I've seen St. Juice play as, as a right back just as much as I've seen a Kanji play as a right back. When a Kanji first came to Dortmund, he played as a left back and a right back for BVB. Because he's fast. He's a fast center back. But he is a center back. Same story goes for St. Juice. I would not sign St. Juice with any hope of playing him in the right back position consistently throughout the season. That is not what he's good for. He's good for a center back. But yes, I agree with most of what you said. I don't agree with the St. Juice point, though. I do think St. Juice could have been a good addition, but for the center back position. Mullen would do okay. Halsenberg or only Mullen and Halsenberg, what do you reckon? I reckon if Brandt stays, Mullen and Halsenberg, 100%. Sell Schultz, sign those two. I think we've got a lot of versatility and we can do a lot of formations that introduce both Royce, Geo, or Royce, Geo, and Brandt. I don't think Maduike, it just throws in so many question marks of who to sell, what formations to play. It's too much personnel that someone is going to rot on the bench and it's going to be a waste of a season. So I personally just want to see Mullen and Halsenberg come in right now, sell Schultz, promote Kubali up there. We're in good shape. We still have, we still have Kanauf and Hazard if you desperately need to play a 4-3-3 or 4-2-3-1. But having Geo, Brandt, and Royce in your plans indicates to me you need to play a 4-1-2-1-2 or a 4-3-2-1. I feel like Bellingham will ditch us in the next season or two being English. It's fair. It's probably true. It's fair. I wouldn't say ditch. I'd just probably say fat offer comes in and we're looking to it. So Messi's a free agent. Got to dream big. Yeah. yeah. I mean, 0% chance, but you never know. Well, I do know. It's 0% chance, but I wish. Akanji's dream is the Premier League too. He said that a few years ago, but didn't play so well back then. True. He was linked to Leicester City for a while there. Um... But I don't know. I see Akanji staying us with us for the for the foreseeable future. Guerrero told that he wants to retire at BVB the other day. I love it. I love it, man. A lot of people are saying we don't have loyal players, but I mean, Peace Jack was as loyal as they come. Royce, yeah, yeah, man, you can't you can't get over it. He's just Royce is the man. I see Guerrero staying long term, and I still personally see Akanji stay long term. I have the feeling that Koble is one that could potentially stay long-term if he can perform. There's a lot, man. Jay says, Josh, who has been your surprise players from the Euros this year? Damsgaard, as was mentioned for the, the Danish squad. 
Um, Hoiberg has been unbelievable. Uh, I think that's a big boost for Tottenham because they need to hold on to anything they can get. I think that he's been spectacular. Um, I mean, without being too obvious, Patrick Schick uh, had an excellent, scored five goals for uh, the Czech Republic um, in a team that was kind of surprising to score that many goals. I was very impressed with him. Um, and then pretty much the entirety of the Italian squad has surprised me in the way that they've performed as a, as a unit. They've been very, very good. Jan Sommer was phenomenal. I, I'm very familiar with Jan Sommer, so it's not a big surprise to me. It was a big surprise to a lot of other people seeing what an incredible, incredible keeper he is because he is. Uh, but, but yeah, I mean, the Danish squad's been a lot of fun to watch so far, and I hopefully you can see them win the Euros, man. What a story it'd be. That tactical manager intro music goes hard. Yeah, Tactical Manager loves his intro. It's a, it's a good one. It's been a, it's been a good little look there for, for a while. Uh, I don't think he's going to be the next um, Weinfeller. I, I don't, but you never know. I, I, just, I, find it, I just find it so hard for young keepers like that to break into the team when we've just went out and bought Koble. So I, I don't see it. I mean, Koble signed, up, I think, a five-year deal, which means that he should be the number one for the next five years, which then pretty much solidifies the fact that y'all need to move on if you want game time. It feels so good to be done with exams and be able to enjoy these streams. Big shout out to Agents being done his exams. Atta boy, my man. Dortmund have three out of the four Swiss goalkeepers and none of them are named Jan Sommer. Yeah, Jan, I've, I've been such a big fan of Jan Sommer, man. We should have signed him all those years ago instead of Berkey. We really, really should have. Um, but what can you do? I mean, I, I got good hopes for Koble. I've been critical about him when the transfer went down, but I have high hopes. I'm optimistic. You guys have told me some very good things about the keeper position because I'm not an expert on keepers. So let's hope that he's demanding. Let's hope that he is vocal. Let's hope that he can save a damn penalty. Can you see Zagadu leaving this transfer window? His contract finishes in 2022 unless he signs a contract extension. Honestly, I didn't at first, Tom, but the fact that we just gave Kuabale, which I still think is a massive deal, Number four, and if we sign Halstenberg, that leaves Halstenberg, that leaves Akanji, that leaves Hummels, that leaves Koulibaly, and even Emery Chan can play as an outside center back if we needed to. There's no room for Zagadou, man. There isn't. We still have young Collins coming up. Maybe, maybe we could sell him, but I don't know what the market would be like and the, and the appetite would be like for him. More than likely, I'd be leaning towards 60-40. He, he resigns rather than being sold, but I don't know, man. This Koulibaly thing's raising a lot of questions. People that rate Halsenberg probably didn't watch our Poco final against RB. He's not an upgrade from Schultz, to be honest. I wouldn't say he's not an upgrade. Very different type of players. I think the reasoning behind selling Schultz is that Schultz doesn't have a future here and will never get minutes over Guerrero. And Halsenberg can be used in three different positions that Schultz can't. Left center back, left outside center back, left back. He's even played as a wing back. But Schultz can play as a wing back and a left back. I think it's more for versatility, for experience than anything else. But again, I'd prefer if we sell Schultz to go for a talented young defensive left back. I've said it many times. I think it's exactly what we need. But I, I don't know. Sometimes it's not, it's not too, small deals like this aren't too bad. Eight mil for uh, for an experienced, talented, versatile player. Is he exceptional? No, he's not. But he is solid, and I think he will be better than Schultz. Now I love Royce, but. It, if we are being fair, he would have. Agents, I think I missed something there. Paduke is needed. We lack players for, uh, that are good 1v1 uh, situations. He's a good dribbler who can unlock the defense and can be serious trouble. I agree. I, I agree. I'm not, not specifically, I agree with everything you say, but the name. I don't think Maduke is the answer. I think the fact that the kid has only started seven games in the Dutch League last year. He played in 23. I think he scored seven goals four assists, so not bad numbers for the amount of minutes he had. He's not proven at this level. He's 19, he's also English, so he will leave in four years. I, I don't know. <laughs> for me, if you're going to spend that money, because he will be overpriced, why not go for, for Liam Bailey if, if you can? Liam Bailey is the perfect fit, in my opinion. I don't know if that deal is even possible, but I agree with everything you said. Ne having a player who can take on a defender 1v1 is important. I don't know exactly if we have someone like that now without Sancho. So the reason Sancho created a lot of opportunity for himself a lot of movement, unlocked the unlocked Holland in certain runs. And honestly, a lot of the times when we saw uh, Sancho go 1v1, one, one he found a way past the defender and put it in the back of the net. 
I'm not sold on Maduke's experience right now to be able to replicate that. But I agree with the fact that we need wingers if we're looking to play that type of style. Has Gio reached the standard of Pulisic when he, he was at Dortmund? I don't know, man. I thought Gio had a good breakout year, and then I felt like last year was kind of a, a regression for him. But he's not, he's not playing in his favorite position, so no, not really. I think Gio's a little bit behind Christian is right now. But Christian also broke out and then, and then fell by the waist away before he got sold. So I don't know. We're going to have to see. I think this could be a big year for Brandt or Gio. I don't see it being a big year for both. I love Royce, but not going to lie, without injuries, he would have maybe left. Mm, I don't know, man. He had the opportunity to leave when he was at his prime, and he, he didn't. Bellingham has a contract until 2025, so he should stay at least two more years. I agree. I think for Bellingham, Bellingham's development in general, he should stay a little bit longer. Sommer is just so underrated because he plays for Gladbach, and he's Swiss too. Usually the most Bundesliga players, keeping Royce Lemdowski aside with the other underrated players. Yeah, he is. Jan Sommer is a phenomenal keeper. I would have I took him at Dortmund in a heartbeat. I think the Maduke deal is a great deal. It's like Sancho joined um, a brilliant young man, also English, not so globally known, and incredible potential. Victor, it could absolutely work out. And more than likely, honestly, it, it will. If we sign him, it will. But it also means that in four years, three years, we will sell him for a fat chunk of money. And I'm just not in the mood to, to do that. Um, and I also don't think that it's a guarantee that he will break out. I do think he's very talented. I've seen a couple interviews with him. He seems very motivated very confident in his own abilities, which is, in my opinion, important for a young player. He looks up to Jane Sancho. It, there's a lot I do like about the deal. I just, I would personally look elsewhere, even though we won't. <laughs> hey, Josh. Just hey. Nothing new. How you doing, British Empire? Hope you're doing well, my man. Probably unrelated to the topic, but since you're a Toronto FC fan, what is your son? <laughs> oh, since Lodato. Oh, I thought you were going to mention the 7-1 loss. Um, I mean, we haven't seen him enough, obviously. I think that we need to play a 4-2-3-1. We need to get Josueo as a cam, throw him out on left wing. Um, I saw him a lot at Santos, and he's, he's incredible. Very, very low center of balance. Good, good. I mean, he can hit him from distance. Play him on the left-hand side. Have Akinola up front. Have him on, on the left attacking mid. Have Pozuelo through the, through the middle on your, on your cam. There's a lot of potential there. I mean, we just, we need a new manager coming in, um, <laughs> to turn this ship around, because... This TFC squad has got way, way too much talent to be this pathetic right now. So, uh, But yeah, I haven't seen enough of him at TFC right now. Zagadu has number five. I don't know what's going to happen to him. I, I don't know either, man. There's a potential. He moves on. Um, can anyone in here compare these two guys to NFL or NBA so I understand? <laughs> um, I can't. I don't know the NBA or NFL well enough to compare them, but... If someone wants to give it a go, I'll be happy to read it out. Summer has made his price tag go up during the Euros. Yes, but he's 31, I believe, and I don't see him probably making a move anytime soon. What do you think of, of Fufan at the back? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if we need to keep bringing in a lot more young talent, especially with Kubali and, and Collins. We even still have Zagadu, so I don't really have an opinion on it right now. Munier, Hazard, Witzel, Hummels look good in the Euros, and Sancho, wait, never mind. Yeah, yeah. Um, any chance that we'll sign Robin Gozins, the next Podolski? <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> what? Um, all right, so 0% chance we sign Robin Gozins. Um, Gozins is the same type of player as Guerrero. No point of bringing him in. Will not start over Guerrero. Needs to go to a team where he'll play, and... Does it, he plays with a left wing back. Podolski is, is a, was a striker, a dual striker, a cam, a winger. A little confused, Christopher, but no, we will not sign Gozens. The RB situation makes me uncomfortable. We have rising talent, and we can't sell before two, three years to make a profit, and Munier is absolutely not sure of the value. We can't buy a new right back. We, Yeah, the right back is a, definitely, it's, it's a question mark, but there's nothing we can really do about it. We're going to go in the season preying on the fact that Munier Turns up. And if not, guys, we have Murray coming back from injury. But again, it's a serious injury. Who knows exactly what kind of Murray we're going to get. And we still have Chan. We also have Paslak. It is. It's the, by far the weakest link to this team. Let's just hope the uh, the Munier, Munier turns good, man. It looks like Dorman signing Maduke is a, bit re uh, is a bit reality by the rumors going on. 
Yeah, I don't know, man. Only time will tell. I, I hope Mullen comes in, and I think Mullen will come in first, but we'll see. No, nah, man, I saw Rosa. He looks like a stubborn dude. Halsberg is a great deal. We'll put, pay a fraction of what Schultz is on. Won't demand too much game time. A player that starts for Leipzig and is good enough to be a backup for us. And that's what I. That's how I'm looking at it. He also, again, I think it's cool. He played for Borussia Dortmund's second team, I think, 68 times. This is a homecoming in mean, a bit, bit of a way for him. He's versatile. He'll be way more useful to the team than Schultz is. Um, it is a good deal, good wages. I just, again, it's still lacking a lot of speed, which is something I really think this back four needed, but... I believe both Mounier and Brandt will have a bounce back season with Rosa, just like Witzel. Mounier is a beast for the Belgian national team. I assume that it's a disaster class from the tactics. Okay, for anyone out there who thinks Brandt will have a bounce back year, tell me who won't then. Because it's a fact. It's 100% a, a fact. And in my opinion, if Brandt is to have this so-called bounce back year and is preferred, that tells me Gio is going to be in for a shit year. That's exactly what that tells me. Um... And I don't, I don't disagree with you. I'm just, I want to, I'm curious. So if you, if you guys are going to say that Brandt is in for a good season, a good bounce back season, tell me who's not. Tell me who is going to suffer. Will it be Hazard? Will it be Geo? Maybe somehow it's Royce. I don't know. Cause someone is going to suffer because that's exactly what's going to happen. Last season, through the success of Sancho, through the success of Royce Holland, people suffered. And also really the success of Dehoud and Bellingham who switched the formation to a 4-2-3-1. Gio and Brandt suffered. So if Brandt's having a true back, bounce back year, that's going to hurt another BBB player. And I'm curious of who you think it is. Because I think one I think one has the potential to have a bounce back year this year, being Gio or Brandt. And from the, what it looks like with Marco Rosa right now, that tells me Gio's in for a long season. And so I'm sorry for you Americans out there, but I don't see a way all three have a good season. There's no, there's no way that works for me. What do you think about... Who do you think... What do you think will be the assistant... The assistant of Holland next season. Okay. I thought you were going to go into assistant coaches and then, okay, I get it. Who do you think will be assisting Holland next season if Sancho leaves? My assumption is it's going to be Royce. And depending on who's having a breakout year, one of Gio, one of Brandt, or one of Mollen. But more than likely, I think Royce is going to take a major role playing as the 10. I thought Jan Sommer was too old. He is old. Who will be the backup left back? If Schultz leave, it'll be Halsenberg. Hey Josh, is it pro today is probably the day Tampa Bay win the Stanley Cup. Yep, sorry to our Canadian fans out there, but yeah, not near as good as Tampa. So if we're promoting Kubali, does that mean we're not signing St. Juice? In my opinion, yes. Also with a mixture of Schultz. And I feel like you guys can see where I'm going with this. I've said it already a little bit on the stream. So sorry if it sounds like a bit of a repeat. But if we weren't potentially bringing in Halsenberg or Kubali, I think we needed to sign St. Juiced. The fact that we're promoting Kubali clearly, and if we bring in Halsenberg who can play as a center back, outside center back, and a left back, we can sell Schultz, and the CB is kind of answered now with Kubali and Halsenberg. That's my opinion. Royce wouldn't have left. I agree, man. I absolutely agree. What if we try Collins at right back? Good on the ball, nice technique, really fast. Right back position isn't much of a problem, in my opinion, optimistic about being optimistic about Moutinier's level it could be a look I have never seen Collins play at right back so I can't really speak to if I think it'll work or not um, I he could maybe have the potential to get transferred into a right back but being realistic in my opinion it's going to be Mounier who starts and plays the majority of the start of next season sorry I missed your answer will there be a FIFA stream I haven't decided I might do one in the afternoon and if I do I will put it out on the community board do you think Mullen will sign in the next few days in my opinion, knowing Dortmund, I thought that the there was I thought the deal was going to be pretty much done, and the uh, after the Sancho deal. So, in my opinion, I see us signing him in the next week. I could be off, but I I think so. Will money be available at the beginning of the season? I don't think so. I I believe it will. I'm not sure exactly. I mean, the Sancho deal needs to go through. I don't understand why Halsberg would leave RB just to be a backup for BBB. I mean, I thought maybe it's something to did with romantic return. Uh, I, yeah, I don't really understand that either. Or maybe he's realizing he's not getting as many looks as he might under Jesse Marsh. Because Jesse Marsh is going to play a 4-4-2. And Willie Orban, and if they bring in Lacroix or someone, maybe that, that stops Halsenberg from playing in the back four. Angelino will obviously start as a left back. Maybe they had something to do with it. Maybe he wanted to take a step to BVB. I'm not 100% sure. Canal is underrated at right wing back. 
Um, could start by playing him in the back three once he becomes comfortable and proves defensively on the fullback. I disagree. Uh, I think playing for the U23s at right wing back is very different than playing in the Bundesliga. My opinion is Kanaf would be a massive liability at right wing back. I think that he's much better going forward than he is defensively, and Knauf should be looked at as a winger. Again, that's just my opinion. Maybe some of you guys have watched him a little bit more, uh, but I don't see Knauf as a defensive unit whatsoever. Both the uh, Borussia's balancing the waist of one team and move on. <sighs> yeah. I heard that Rosa isn't, uh, isn't so fond of Geo, so maybe Brandt will be our choice. That's the way I'm looking at it. I haven't read anything specifically saying that he doesn't fancy uh, Geo, but he clearly fancies Brandt. So that's why I said if one of if Brandt's having a good year, to me that means Geo is not. Uh, we all called Gozen's the next holy here. He looks his looks and his manner were very similar. Okay, I was very confused because like two totally different players, but okay, it was the looks that makes more sense. Doku Mullen sounds better. It does, but I don't think we'll be able to get him. Not with the hype around him right now. He'll probably go to a team that can outbid us. I'm going to go Josh. See you in the later stream. Take care, agents. Hope you're doing well. The who is going to fail dilemma really depends on the formation. I agree with that. If we stick to the 3-4-3, three, three, it could be Brent again. Not unpredictable enough to be a winger, not or nor physically. I don't see us playing a 3-4-3. Three, three. I don't see us playing with any type of wingers right now. I see us playing more of a 3-4-2-1, which is where I see e either Geo or Brandt doing well. So it's a 3-4-2-1. Three, four, three, those two floating cams is where you'll see Geo be successful or Brandt being successful with Royce hauling up front. But now you've got Mullen to bring into the equation as well. So you can do the 4-1-2-1-2 with Brandt as the 8, Royce as your 10, two strikers, Mullen, Holland, which then eliminates probably one of Bellingham or Dehoud. So it's tough to see which way we go but i agree it depends on the formation but i think if one of those two is going to be successful unfortunately it means one will not do you think makuku will get game time this season my prediction i stand by it he'll start 10 games and will play in about 20. i believe in munier i like to think i do as well uh should be should we go for a great promise to have the money in the future or a more experienced man uh to have some confidence i'm assuming you're referring to halsenberg versus uh Left back, I don't know, or like a defensive young left back. I don't know what the right answer answer is. I'm in for a backup position. I'm fine with either. We could try Rose's four one two one two and could play Reyna unless he adapts as a CM behind Brandt, which he's fully capable to do. And see what I mean, though. If you that that won't happen because that leaves out Royce. If you play Brandt as a ten and 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 Geo as your as your eight, you don't have Royce in there. So one of those two will always have to miss out. I don't see formation all three play. Depends on who comes out of the gate better and establishes himself from the start. It's a very good point, but it seems to me like Brandt's got every chance to succeed this year because the coach is trusting in him. I felt very good about this upcoming season. Oscar, I'm glad, my man. Josh, if much rather prefer a young prospect as a left back, someone um, in their teens that can hop in and the squad should Guerrero need some time off if necessary. Yes, and, and I agree. If, if I'm going to... If I'm going to put an ideal replacement for Nico Schultz, I'm going defensive, because Guerrero isn't defensive, young, left back. Makes the most sense. But the reason I think Halsenberg will be preferred now is because it doesn't look like we're going to be signing another center back. So they're going to try to promote Koulibaly, and if it doesn't work out for him, you have Halsenberg who can play as the outside center back and in a back four. You know, And then you also have your coverage for a backup left back in Halsenberg. So it's more of a stretch than going for specifically just a natural left back. That's my reasoning behind it. I don't know if it's true. That's the only thing I can see. Prob Chan or Delaney will get less minutes rather than Chan, though. Chan was so always preferred, man. Always preferred, and I, and I just never got it. I hope that Witzel will play. If we do a three-man midfield, Witzel with, uh, or Delaney, but I think Delaney might leave. Witzel with Bellingham and Dehoud. Much better, in my opinion. Gozins is better than Halsenberg, but what's the point of signing a player identical pretty much to Guerrero because one of the two will have to sit out and I'm I love Rafa man no way I not I don't I would see Gozins come in and replace him that's the reason I don't see us putting money on Gozins because Gozins deserves to start just not at Dortmund do you play FIFA mobile I do not I do not was it true that in 2019-20 season we had a choice between Havertz and Brandt we made a mistake with that one I'm not, I mean, we sort of, we did. I don't think that's true, in my opinion. I don't think that's true. But I don't think Havertz is, 
has really hit it at Chelsea. I think he's had a bit of an up and down season. Yes, he scored the Champions League winning goal, has massive confidence to build on, had a decent Euros, but I don't think Havertz has quite lived up to his potential yet, even though he's much younger than Brandt, has a, poten- has a huge potential to do so. But I don't believe that was true at all. I think that Brandt was our guy and Havertz wasn't looking to come to Dortmund. I hope we win the Bundesliga next season. I do as well. Not true about the rumor about Havertz. Royce did say that he wanted both to play for BVB, so we'll see what happens um, in the future. Agent Marco makes it possible. <laughs> I still prefer Chan over Witzel and Delaney. I know I'm in the minority, but on his day, Chan can do everything and extremely consistent towards the end of the 1920 season. Yeah, I mean, I would say you're in the minority, but everyone has their opinion. That's what makes it beautiful. Um, I dis- I disagree, though, man. I don't trust Emery Chan. Not not in a position as important as your six. Axel Witzel brings so much leadership, so much maturity, so much calmness to that number six position, which I think would make Dehoud and Bellingham better. When you're thinking of calm, composed, I don't think of Emery Chan. He's a liability. He always has been. Um, but on his day, like you said, he can be good. And Emery, and Emery Chan did come up clutch towards the end of Dortmund's season, but consistency-wise is a big issue with Emery Chan. Um, so I, I prefer, in my order, I'd probably go Witzel, Delaney, Chan right now. But that's just me. When goes and talks, he's more unpolished than Molly, and uh, says that says it how it is, not scripted like most of the other internationals. It's always a breath of fresh air, in my opinion. I still think Brandt is our future number 10 in, after two years. Well... If Marco Rosa prefers him over Gio, there's a chance. There's a chance, man. Um, what would your so if I'm doing an eleven right now? If I'm doing an eleven right now, with the assumption, I guess, with the assumption we bring in Halsenberg and Mullen, I'll do two. I'll do one with the assumption we bring them in. Mm, it's tricky. It's tricky. I still see a 3-4. I still see a 3-4-2-1 being a really ideal formation to start off with. Kobe will be in net. Mounier will be playing right wing back, which he if he replicates his Belgium form, that's what he plays. Right center back would be a Kanji, who's quick, can play the outside right center back. Hummels will be your central center back, which is by far his best position with his pace. I need a charger. Laptop was almost dying there. Hummels will be your central center back, which is his best position, the quarterback role. Left center back could be Koulibaly or Halsenberg, depending on who comes in, so take your pick. Left wing back, who, again, by far is his best position, is Guerrero. Your two center mids, which sucks. I would like to have three center mids in there, but it would be Witzel, Dehoud, or Bellingham, two of the three. Then you have your either Royce as your cam with Holland and Mullen, or if Mullen's not in, you have your two cams with Brant and... Royce, and then Holland up front. It's hard, man. On the Havertz thing, he did say, if he had seen the Bundesliga, he would have been so much better, especially the team like Dortmund. I think so too, man. I think he, he had a tough go with uh, Chelsea. Why aren't we chasing Camavinga? Don't have the money, and I don't think that... Uh, it is a joke fee, but I don't think we have the money to go for Camavinga, and uh, I really don't think that the center mid, center CDM positions one will be addressing. In the likely scenario that we sign Maduke and Mullen, what would your start 11 be? If I was to fit them both in, I would have to go... Ooh. <laughs> I'd have to go 4-2-3-1. It would be Koble, Mune right back, Akanji Hummels, two center backs, Guerrero left back, Witzel and Bellingham or Dehoud as your two CDMs, Royce as your cam, Maduke out on the right wing, Mullen on the left wing, Holland striker, and guess what? No Brandt, no Geo. So that's why, again, I don't, I don't. if you're looking to play... Brant, man, you can't sign Madu, okay? And you're going to have to find a formation that works without wingers. 1920 season, Havers was a candidate for Bayern, and the board didn't want to spend the money, so they got Sané instead. I do remember that. Josh, you're killing it today. Pretty long stream. It was a long stream, and we're going to wrap it up right now. So, guys, thank you guys so much. Awesome stream today. You guys were, uh, you guys were absolutely killing it, man. I am interested in this last last comment. This is the last comment of the day. Mon left, Holland 9, and Maduke on the right. That's better than if we had Sancho and Geo and Hazard. Yep. Yep. Um, 
Yeah, Mullen, if Mullen and Maduke both came in, that's exactly what it would be. 4 2 3 1. And that would leave out Hazard, that would leave out Geo, that would leave out Brandt, man. So, I don't know. It's going to be crazy. I can't wait to see the way that this plays out and what formation and what personnel we go with. Um, I, I, you guys are keep, keeping this going. Okay. I hear Donny Van Beek is available on loan for 2 mil. Thoughts? I'd take him. If we sell Delaney, why not bring in Donny Van Beek? Even though, again, actually, no. I don't think there's a point. Because I want to see DeHude and Bellingham play as much as possible. I like Donny Van Beek. But he's not going to break in, especially with Chan still sitting there, Delaney sitting there. We have Toby Rashel we could promote. We have too much depth in the middle of the park to bring in Van de Beek. It would hurt someone else's growth. But excellent point. I am a fan of Van de Beek, but I don't think he'll be coming to Bruce Dortmund, guys. But we are wrapping the stream up there today. You guys were killing it on this Monday. Good transfer talk. A lot of opinions. You guys were very fun in the chat. So be sure on your way out to drop a like one final time. And if you're anyone's new around here, be sure to subscribe. And we will be back soon. We will more than likely be doing both watch-alongs uh, for the two semifinal games. We'll be going for Denmark. We'll be going for probably Italy, I guess. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But hopefully I'll see a lot of you guys there. And we'll keep you posted if we do any FIFA streams on Twitch on the community board. So keep an eye on that, guys. Cheers, and we'll see you guys soon.